going on, little friend? You need some hugs? You want to say hello to everybody? <laughs> Hi, DIY friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and this is a place where fun and wacky DIYs come to life. Lately, I've been thinking about how to create DIY projects that will cheer me up. I mean, we're all home, spending way more time in our spaces than we ever could have imagined. What I've found helps me in a weird way is creating spaces that make me feel like I'm out. I created a bathroom that makes me feel like I'm in a little quaint boutique B&B. &B. It makes me feel like I'm in some other place traveling. I mean, sometimes I even leave out fresh face cloths with like a wrapped bar of soap just to like give it that extra little something something, you know? And then I got thinking about how much I missed spending time in coffee shops. Yes, I know, I'm one of those people that just loved taking my laptop to a coffee shop and it's so cliche, but I did genuinely love it. I just, I like being around people that are also doing work or chit chatting with their friends. So then it hit me, I wanted to create a fun cafe inspired menu board on my wall, but it would also act as a fun way to create positive messages so I can cheer myself up. So if you're with me, then let's go make a menu board. Yeah, you gotta go out. Bye bye. No place for dogs. Okay, so I found my inspiration for my menu board from a brand called George and Willie. They are literally the masters of signage and letter boards. I even have one of their products in my home right now. This is the Studio Roller. Jeff and I love it for grocery lists and to-do tasks around the home. Ah, oh, fail. But there was one message board that really caught my eye and that was their Atelier letter board. How cool does this look with the floating letters on top and the sleek metal bar? Oh yeah, I can make that. $568 is just a wee bit too much for my own home. Maybe if I had an actual cafe business and I wanted to invest in that, that would be great, but I can't justify that for my home. I know I can DIY this. I know I can DIY it for cheaper. Which in a sense, I guess this could have been a can I make it for cheaper? So maybe we'll make this a can I make it for cheaper? The mini edition. Okay, so I'm gonna show you where I think my DIY version could go. This is my kitchen. This wall here is where I want to add the menu board. This is a good spot for it because there, this walkway here is very, very narrow and I don't really wanna put a lot on this wall. So having something that's very minimal but kind of decorative and cool, I think will be really a neat way to add some, you know, personality to the space. The one thing I really liked about the George and Willie version was just their minimal approach to it. So I got thinking, how could I do this myself? So the first material I'm using are these weldable half inch steel tubes. These you can find in any hardware store and most of them come in three feet. This one is a three footer. Also at the hardware store, I sourced these little square caps. So these actually sit right on top just to make so that the edges are not exposed so they fit on there perfectly I also have a drill bit set that can actually drill into steel which is what we'll need I have some gold spray paint some black spray paint my glue gun I have these little tiny magnets that I sourced and then I also source these letter board letters. They are the perfect size on my board to create what I needed to do. So, what do you think, Pop Up? What do you think, little boy? Oh my goodness, I love you so much. You're the cutest boy in the whole wide world. So, with all these materials as you see here, we can now create our menu memo board. It's my menu board. Feel good menu display board, wow. I'll think of a better name, we'll, I'll get back to you. In the meantime, we need to get started on our letters. So what's gonna happen is, I'm actually not going to remove the letters from this casing because it's actually gonna be easier to spray paint all these letters if it's still connected to this. I'm hoping that this is the right way to do it. My gut tells me it's the right way to do it. 
My first step was to take my tiny magnets and glue them to these small tabs already created on the bottom of the letters using my glue gun. I only added one magnet per letter. I figured this would definitely be enough to function the way I needed it to. This was a laborious process. I believe it took me close to two hours to finish all the letter sheets, but you throw on a good audiobook or maybe Netflix in the background, and that, my friends, is an easy two hours on a Saturday afternoon. While I work away at this, I do just want to say that you can definitely buy magnetic letters if you want to do an even easier route to creating this DIY. I just couldn't find versions that had the right font type that I was looking for. Most were made for children and looked like a bubbly Comic Sans font. You know what I'm talking about, right? And when I was done, I had a little army of magnetic letters ready to be spray painted. So we got our letters done and they're all ready to go and be spray painted. But first I want to get my steel rods prepped. Now what I need to do is drill a hole on either side of the steel rod so that I can attach it to the wall. So what I did was I brought in my drill press, but if you don't have a drill press at home, you absolutely can use a drill. You just have to make sure that you're going very straight through the steel. Now what I'm gonna be doing is using two different drill bits. I'm using a 964 to drill the actual hole. And then I'm actually going to countersink using a bigger drill bit just at the top so that the screw can sit in flush. I'm gonna put my protective wear on because this can get a little bit uh, messy. So let's get to it. To create my holes, I first measured where I wanted the holes to be on each bar. I opted for one inch from the edge and clamped the steel bar down to the table of my drill press. The other thing that I'm actually doing for this is I have a little dropper here and I have canola oil. So I'm gonna be adding a little drop of canola oil right to where I wanna be drilling. And what this is doing is kind of creating a lubricant for my drill bit when drilling into the steel. When you're creating friction with the drill bit is that it's gonna get really, 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 really hot. And if it gets really hot, then your drill bit ends up breaking. And the other thing is I'm using canola oil because it can withstand very high temperatures because this drill bit is going to create a lot of heat on this piece of steel. At this point, it was just rinse and repeat, drilling two holes at each end of my steel tubes, first using my 9 16 inch drill bit, and created a small countersink using my quarter inch drill bit. And to prep these steel bars for spray painting, I'm simply sanding all four sides of each bar to help scratch up the metal and give something for my paint to stick to. From there, I set up a little spray station on the ground, opened up my back door for some ventilation, and proceeded to spray paint both the letters and the steel bars. Bars. And I don't know how noticeable this is on camera, but my black spray really failed me. It was old, but for some reason, even shaking it really, really well, that spray paint was just gonzo. Regardless, in replacement of that, I ended up covering the letters with a charcoal spray paint instead. Holy Toledo, I have never had that problem before. Oops, and I forgot to spray the cap, so there we go. I meant to attach them to the bars ahead of time, but I guess I'll just wait for the second coat. Everything is officially spray painted. Jeffrey also came home, brought two more of the rails for me. So I just put the holes in them, sanded them down, and now they are officially back there. Essentially, now it's just keep spray painting, putting on layers, make sure everything's covered, and then uh, we're almost done. That's amazing. So I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning DIY friends, day two of our memo board DIY. So everything is turning out great. I actually got up early this morning and I've been spraying the other sides of the steel bars. Yay. Let me just show you guys what this looks like in a close up. It just looks so matte. I mean, disregard all the little cobwebs that can get removed, but like the color just came out so matte and it's so lovely. I think I'm gonna leave it. I think I like it but come with me because next week you are going to be seeing a kitchen refresh makeover. <laughs>
<laughs> of this entire space. Well, not the entire space, but part of that refresh is going to be that I'm gonna be painting a few walls. And I thought to really show this message board off, I kind of wanted to do it against the new wall color. So I'm thinking today while I'm waiting on the metal bars to dry, I am going to paint just this wall. It'll give me a head start for next week, which is great. And uh, it'll make this message board look so much better. So super motivated. <laughs> Let's go paint! And motivated I was. So as you would do when you're painting any space, I got my wall prepped, filling in any holes and bad spots, cleaned down the wall, removed any wall plates and decorative items, and protected my floors. The paint color I was using was Bare Scuff Defense in a flat called Bit of Sugar. Yes, the same color as my front entryway floors. I'm a paint repeater, guilty. But don't worry folks, color is going into this space. We just need to brighten this kitchen up first and just remove the gray blue to start. And while I waited for both my wall and my rods to dry, I got started on removing my magnet letters from the plastic packaging. You actually can order these letters in black. I know, the black wouldn't order to me in time. So I ended up just getting the teal because for some reason the teal could get to me in time. But you can buy black letters. Where did you go? As I started to remove the letters from the plastic packaging, I did realize that the section I would cut off would end up showing that teal color. This is when having black would have been really ideal. So I did end up spray painting the letters again, which was not great, but say la vie. I think if I was to do this again, I probably would change my mind about keeping them on the uh, package. I think what I would, I would do next time is just literally take them all off, then put the magnets on it, which would be way easier, and then just spray paint them like this. But you know, I will say I am so impressed with this chalk, uh, the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. The coverage on it has been so good. I never thought. And what's great is this is all drying. Now, um, I'm gonna do this off camera, but much later, I'm going to add a clear coat on top just to give it a nice protective top coat, and then we should be ready to put this on the wall. I'm excited. My cafe dreams are coming true. <laughs> See you soon. The next day, my metal bars were looking so beautiful, and I was ready to hang this bad boy up. First finding the studs in the wall and then using a level, which was conveniently magnetized so it stuck to the steel bar. So sweet. I screwed each bar into place, giving it four inches of space in between. And now all that was left to do was create whatever message I wanted to create. does this message board look? You can create your own at-home cafe. You can create fun, motivational affirmations, leave messages. The world is your oyster when you have a message board in your home. Because this ended up being an unintentionally created Can I Make It For Cheaper? A reminder, the original inspiration for this project was a total of $568. With shipping, it came to a total of $602.60. And if I tally up my tools not included, the full price breakdown of this project came to a total of $123.80 with tax that's $139.89. But I do think I could have sourced my steel bars for cheaper with a little more research, but either way, I saved $462.71 by creating my home DIY version. I think something like this is so great to have in your home or if you have a small business. This was so simple and so fun to create and I can't wait to create more cafe inspired and fun messages in my home. And if you're wondering, I simply stashed all the unused letters in a closable jar that I could keep on the counter. Uh, barista, can I get a top up? Yeah, no, take your time. I'll be here all day. Thank you so much for watching this DIY message memo menu board thing. Hurrah, we found a good name. If you're not already subscribed, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we got more positive DIYs coming your way. Stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye bye.